The following video contains educational content. These demonstrations are not dangerous and should be attempted by all viewers. Enjoy. All right, so here I am at the Sifton Cook Heritage Center in Coburg, Ontario once again. I'm the artist in residence there for 2019. And um, this particular video, I'm working in Sharpie Pen. I had done this just after I had completed the previous video uh, where I was working in uh, graphite. So I knew most of the things that I was going to put onto the page. I knew where everything was going to sit. And I had figured out the perspective by use of a couple of different um, thumbnail sketches I had done. So I didn't have to think too much about any of the perspective. I had most of the, the thought of where the lines were gonna be. I had most of that down pat at this point. And you'll see I'm putting in some windows here and things. Uh, when you're working with Sharpie Pen, you know, the one thing about Sharpie Pen is that the lines are very, very black. They are very, very dark. You'll see here I'm figuring out some of the perspective and figuring out where I need a line and things with the pen. But the lines in a Sharpie Pen are very, very black. And um, I go over them. Sometimes I do a second and a third line over them if I want to make them darker. Or if I'll, I'll put in some hatching or some cross hatching, as you'll see in the, the, some of those windows there, I have some cross hatching and some hatching. This entire part of the uh, drawing, all the drawing with the Sharpie pen took me, um, I think on the, on the video it was 13 minutes. So I've sped it up um, significantly here just so that um, I could get it all, could get it all on for YouTube. So here you'll see, uh, I'm just figuring out some angles. You'll see when I'm holding my hand up like that, I'm thinking about how is it I get that angle onto the page. And here I'm just adding some of the, some of the details in, in black and um, just figuring out, you know, where is it some of these things are going to go or where it is they're not going to go. And I'm getting, uh, I'm getting some more detail in here with the black pen. But I kind of knew right from the very beginning that this was going to be a pen drawing that I then was going to um, paint and so having known that about myself this is all done on watercolor paper so I'm using 140 pound uh, Canson watercolor paper uh, which is what I use most of the time to tell you the truth if I was doing just a drawing you know in the, in the previous work I, I did a, a drawing a graphite drawing and there was no watercolor or anything added to that but um, that was also done on watercolor paper. I use watercolor paper almost all the time. I shouldn't say almost all the time. All the time I use watercolor paper because it gives me the option to put uh, wet medium on there. And if you don't use watercolor paper, then you don't have the option. So my suggestion is gonna be you know, use watercolor paper all the time. I've sort of gotten most of my students used to that now. I think, I think most of them have bought into the idea that it gives you the option that you don't have if you're using just drawing paper. So here you'll see, uh, you know, it was very hot this day and very sunny. I'm taking my eraser and just cleaning some stuff up. I have out my Sennelier paint set and I'm just putting a whole bunch of water on the page here where I want the sky to be. And um, I work very wet. I work very loose. I work very wet. Um, I get as much water on the page as I think I need to have to get the paint to move in the direction that I want to move. And working on this board like this with these clips on this board allows me to tip the page in the direction that I want the water to flow and the color to flow. So here I just got the sky in, um, super, super wet page, very, very thin wash. Uh, in fact, so, some people might call this type of drawing a uh, line and wash. And I think most people in the UK especially are going to say that that's how they would refer to this would be line and wash. And uh, it's not heavily painted. It's, you know, very, very, um, I guess the paint is like a wash. It's a very, very thin amount, a very, very little amount, I should say, of color and a lot of water. So I'm getting the page significantly wet before I apply the color. And here you see I'm putting in some, uh, this gray wall that you may recall from the, the photo. This, this uh, Sifton Cook Heritage Center is, uh, this is sort of the focal point, this gray building on the left here. 
this is a building that there's a lot of speculation about. Nobody really knows what it is. A lot of people have always referred to it as the barracks. Um, but when, you know, archaeologists came in and actually excavated it, they didn't find any military buttons. They didn't find any military paraphernalia, not a single bullet. Um, so uh, what it actually was and who actually built it is a, quite a bit of a mystery here in this town. So you'll see here I'm putting in some green grass along the fence line and I'm starting to put in some of this tree. Uh, there's quite a few trees actually along the right hand side. I decided to edit out most of those. The one thing that you'll notice from most of my artwork is that I heavily edit pretty much everything that I do. So um, I try to get down to whatever, what is the bare, you know, what is the things that I need to include in this uh, painting or in this drawing for you to understand where it is. And so I've edited out a lot of things like along that fence line on the right, there's a outdoor uh, railway that runs along there. So there's a miniature railway that all runs across there. Well, I edited all that right out. I'm probably going to come along and actually do some drawings of that miniature railroad, but I didn't want to include those in this particular painting. You'll see here I'm putting in some yellow in some of the some of the grass on the, on the ground and some of the trees. I'm putting a little bit of yellow on that um, chimney right there. It's actually a very yellowy brick, um, so that's actually not too far away, but um, not too far away from the actual color of it. Putting a little bit more yellow across the ground here where the grass is, just to brighten it up a little bit. And you'll see I'm working in shade here. I'm really sorry that I had to shoot this in the shade, but it was a, it was a day that was very, very bright. And uh, not only was it very, very bright, um, it was extremely hot. So if I wasn't in the shade, my paint would dry before I even got a chance to, um, you know, go back and refill my brush. So that's why you'll see I'm working in the shade. I will show you a shot of this, uh, without all of the shade near the end of the video here. Uh, you just see me with my tissue there a second ago. I, you know, one of the things that I do is I, I have a tissue on me all the time when I'm working with watercolor because a tissue is a great way to subtract color out. It's also a good way, you know, if you have too much paint or it's too wet, you can just run the tissue along the edge of the area where it's too wet, extract out some of the, the, the wetness, extract out some of the color. Also, the other thing that a tissue will do for you is it will give you some texture, you know? So if this tissue is balled up and you put it onto a wet area or onto an area that is almost dry um, and you lift it off, you get this sort of um, rocky kind of a texture on the, on the surface. And doing, you know, if you wanted to create a rocky area, if you wanted to create, like you've seen, I was doing that for the brick on the roof there. But if you wanted to create an area that had, um, had a, a kind of a chunky kind of a surface, you would use a tissue that had a, a tissue that was balled up. You see, I'm going back over this where some of these, um, these are wood shingles on this. So I'm just adding a little bit of texture onto the, that wood shingle area. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who's one of my subscribers. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And, um, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really humbling to see how many people subscribe to my channel and how many people comment. Um, I really do appreciate every comment and all those comments sort of help me, uh, you know, keep me motivated to keep making more and more YouTube videos. So if you're currently a subscriber, I really do thank you very much. And if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, please click liked and here is the finished product. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again next time.